Congenital insensitivity to pain, or CIP, is when a person does not feel any pain. To figure out how CIP works, you must first look at how pain works. Pain works when nerves carry messages from your body to your spine, and then your spine carries the messages to your brain. An example is if you cut your finger, receptors in your fingers send a message through the nerves to the brain that tells it, ouch. Without those nerve fibers, the body and brain cannot communicate. In CIP, those individuals do not have nerve fibers. Pain messages don't make it to the brain and the people do not feel the pain. This animation shows how a normal person's nerve cells send messages to the brain. A person with CIP does not do this and therefore cannot feel pain. Many individuals unintentionally inflict injuries to themselves because they cannot feel the pain. You're probably thinking, is there any cure to CIP? The answer, sadly, is no. But many families learn how to cope with it. Many individuals scratch their eyes and severely damage their eyesight. A way to fix this is by wearing goggles or protective eyewear so that they can't scratch it. Another helpful thing is parents may teach a child to get help whenever he sees blood on himself. He may not feel any pain, but he can learn to recognize the sight of blood as a sign of danger. Because people with congenital insensitivity to pain have difficulty telling when they need to use the restroom, setting a timer on a wristwatch can help remind them. Physical therapy can help with specific problems caused by CIP, especially with the joints. This is caused because the individuals with CIP, after sitting for long periods of time in specific positions, may cause stress on the joints. Normal people feel pain and stress on joints and switch positions. However, people with CIP do not feel this stress and continue to sit that way. Here is Sean. As you see, Sean is a happy child. No worries, no health problems, nothing. He feels normal pain and is generally a happy child. On the other hand, here's George. Notice his facial expressions. George feels no pain. When George strikes Sean, he feels pain. But when Sean strikes George, he feels no pain and jumps right back into the action. Okay, I apologize for the delay of this week's episode, but we had a little scramble with our guests today. We got into a little fight, but they made up and they're back on the show. So we have met George and Sean today. We're going to discuss his illness. George, what is it like to live with congenital insensitivity to pain or CIP? Well, CIP, I don't feel pain. I feel nothing. I can shove a knife right through my hand. Feel nothing. So, how is this disease caused? This disease 
is caused by simple Mendelian dominance. It is a recessive gene and is passed down. Both of my parents had it, though it wasn't expressed. It's a recessive gene, so my parents were both heterozygous. I, unfortunately, received this gene. Mendelian dominance, what do you mean by that? Well, here, I'll show you. Okay, so CIP exhibits simple Mendelian dominance, and we're gonna show you how two normal people with sensitivity could produce, produce a child with uh, CIP. So, first we're gonna start off with the cross, which is gonna be two heterozygous carriers. And as you see here, I'm drawing it. Next, we make our Punnett square. <laughs> you put the female on top. And the male on the side. And we do it. The phenotype ratio of the offspring will be three with sensitivity to one with CIP. The genotype ratio of the offspring will be one homozygous dominant to two heterozygous to one homozygous recessive. So as you see, three-fourths of the offspring will not have CIP, but will have sensitivity. But uh, this one-fourth over here will have CIP, and it's a recessive trait. At what age were you diagnosed with this disease? I was diagnosed when I was around five years old, after my mom took me to the doctors when I was biting my lip. and. I couldn't feel any pain, I would bite it so hard I would start bleeding. And other things too, like I would put my hand and burn it, and I wouldn't feel anything, but I'd take it off and I saw my hand was all scorched and burnt, and that's when I was diagnosed.